Hi everyone, this is Sharan. Welcome to my channel. This is going to be a tutorial video series on learning data science in 100 days. The various topics that I'll be covering would include basic Python programming, introduction to pandas, numpy and visualization libraries in Python, statistics that is required for data science and implementing them using Python. And we will be going through some of the common algorithms that are used in a data science project by implementing various real life use cases. So this is going to be really a launch series, but I hope by end of this, you will, you will learn all the skills that is required for a data science. So who, who can watch this video? So this video is suitable for students who are trying to learn data science, as well as professionals who are looking for transitioning their career into data science. Okay. Let's go into the day one. First, we are going to start with the installation of the tools that is required. We are going to install Anaconda. So it is a distribution, open source distribution for Python and R programming languages. So it's very easy to use. Uh, if you haven't uh, used any IDE for programming, this should be very easy for you to get started. So let's see how to install Anaconda uh, for us to get started. So as you can see my screen, depending upon the operating system that you are going to use, if it is Windows, uh, you can follow the instructions that is provided on the screen. I will be sharing all the URLs that I'm using here. Uh, so you can follow the instructions that is provided in this window and install Anaconda. So once you have completed the installation of Anaconda, so to get started, there are some details provided here. So again, I will be sharing these uh, URLs, but there are two ways to get started with Anaconda. So one is uh, using the Anaconda command prompt. Which would be something like this. So here we can go into the folder where we have all of our scripts and we can type in Jupyter notebook so this will get us started by opening the Jupyter notebook yeah so as you can see on my screen here so this takes us to the root directory from which we have opened the Jupyter notebook and if I go into the day one so here there is a script which has already been created. So if I open this, so this includes some of the various topics that we are going to cover today. So the other way to open an IDE is using the navigator, the Anaconda navigator. Uh, so the Anaconda navigator looks something like this. So you can start Jupyter notebook from here as well by pressing, uh, by clicking the launch button. So that there is one more IDE which is also preferable, which is called as spider. So by clicking on the launch button, we open the spider. So I have already have it opened. So, so this is how the spider IDE would look like. So here, in order to get started, you can create a project by clicking on projects, new projects, just specify the name of the projects as well as location where you would want the strips to be stored here. and once you enter create, the project would, have, would be created. So here I have already created a project. It's called as learn data science in 100 days. So I'm going to right click here and then open, which should open the folder of this particular location. And I can copy the strips and paste it here. So once I paste it here, this should be readily available for us to use in the IDE. So as you see here, so I have the scripts here as well. So now since this is a Python notebook script, it can't be directly opened here. Whereas if it is a dot py, which is a Python script, we should be able to open it here. We can also double click and open the uh, various other files. Yeah, so since this is a Python notebook file, when you try to open it, so it comes up like this. So this is, these are all the two IDE options that we can use to get started. So for time being, uh, to get started, we will not be using Spider. 
whereas we will be using only a Jupyter Notebird. So some of the basic uh, details for getting started with Jupyter Notebird would include, uh, let's say, while typing it. So if I want to comment, so as you see on the screen, I can use a asterisk for comment. So by so this means that uh, this line item will not be executed when you run the script. And the other advantage of uh, using Jupyter Notebird, rather than advantage, I would say, I would say the the good part of using Jupyter Notebird, it helps in uh, documenting the scripts. Like it's very useful when you know, during the development phase. So we can document what we are trying to do. So as you see here, so this is mentioned as markdown. So by clicking here and then mentioning it as markdown, uh, it means that this, so here we can provide various comments, details, uh, some of the logic or reasoning behind our scripting. Uh, and by making this as markdown, so this won't be considered as a script or a code, whereas this can be useful for documenting, uh, uh, documenting uh, the reasoning or uh, uh, providing more details about what we are doing and why we are doing here. So now when I execute it, what happens is this will be treated as an HTML. And uh, so by running it, so it will be executed and then we, we have all these details on the screen. So for someone new, so who is going to go through your project, by having all the details in the markdown would help them in a better understanding the script. Uh, and for you as well, like if you're going to get back to the script after a very long time, it would be a really good practice to document as much as possible so that it becomes easier. Uh, so the other thing is uh, we have gone, we have seen uh, the Anaconda installation. Uh, of course, it's provided in this link here. And starting Jupyter Notebook as well as Spider. Uh, yeah, even though we have seen Spider, at least for the next few weeks, uh, we will be using only Jupyter Notebook predominantly. And uh, some basic functionalities like in Spider, we saw how to create a new project. And uh, for now, that should be enough. So when we when we uh, get started with Spider, we can see how to execute scripts uh, using Spider. It's it's very simple. Like uh, so, you just need to type in all your scripts. So let's say I'm going to um, uh, create a variable at like x is equal to one, y is equal to three, and let's say I'm going to print x plus y. So by clicking on this button, so if you see here, by clicking on the, the play button, so this, this whole script has been executed and you can see the result here on the screen as five. So it's it's very simple. Uh, similarly, in uh, Jupyter Notebook, let's say I want to maybe do the same thing. It is equal to three, y is equal to five and print x plus y so by clicking on this run button it would it would execute the script that is present in this particular cell and the output would be displayed here just below the cell so so that's about uh, like the basics about the ides and uh, and regarding installing various packages so in order to install various packages so let's first save this like using control s and uh, Let's close these ones. And uh, from the command prompt, so let's say I want to install a particular package. So then what I need to do is, I need to come out of the Jupyter Notebook. And here I can install using pip pip install and name of the package, let's say pandas. So this command will ensure that uh, this library is installed. So here what you are seeing is, uh, you're, you're seeing that the requirement is already satisfied. The good thing about uh, uh, using Anaconda is, while while getting started with Anaconda, it comes up with some of the basic packages like uh, Pandas, NumPy, and even some visualization uh, libraries would be already preloaded. So it saves time, no need to uh, install them again. So that's about uh, installing, uh, uh, installing uh, the packages. Uh, and like maybe one more thing that would be helpful is uh, uh, there is a link here which is called as managing the environment. What we can do is in Anaconda, 
we can create multiple environments. So let's say we have, we are doing, we are working on multiple projects, like one on Python 3.6 and then maybe something on Python 2, or we are uh, trying to do a project on deep learning. So usually what happens is the dependencies of the packages for each of these projects would be, would be very different. Uh, so in some cases it could be very really contradicting. So, uh, so what we can do here is uh, it allows us to create multiple environments and whatever package that you install would stay only within the environment and it won't overlap with the other environments. So it's very easy for us to manage. Um, so creating an environment is also very easy. So if uh, the instructions are provided here as well, I, I will be providing this link uh, uh, in, in the description. In order to see the various environments that is available for us, uh, we can use conda environment list. So this will bring us all the environments that we have created. Uh, yeah, so as you see here, there are already like a basic environment, basic environment, Python 2, a one for NLP, one for vision. What we can do is we can create a uh, new environment for us for learning data science in 100 days. So what we do is a Tonda create n and so name of the environment, let's call it as uh, learn data science, uh, data science 100. And we want to use Python 3.6 for this. Okay, so now this should create as the environment called uh, uh, DS100. So I'm going to proceed. This should take uh, like a couple of seconds. So these are all the, uh, the advantages of uh, using uh, Jupyter, creating multiple environments, uh, like, uh, depending upon the projects that you are working on, and uh, make sure that it's not uh, uh, like, uh, uh, installing or making changes to one environment uh, doesn't affect the other one. So now this has been created. So now let's see the environment list and see if the new environment is created. So once the, the new environment is created, so we can see DS100 is created. So now what we need to do is we need to activate uh, the environment. Activate DS100. Ponda, activate DS100, yeah. Okay, so now you can see from base, it's uh, it got moved into DS100. So now we are into the environment called DS100. So whatever packages that we install here will remain only within this particular environment. So now if I do Jupyter Notebook, while getting started with the Jupyter Notebook, from the new environment that you have created, if you would get any error, such as here, so which says that a Jupyter Notebook it is not recognized as an internal or external command, so then, so most likely you would be getting this uh, error so then in that case, what we need to do is we need to, we need to uh, install, we need to do a Tonda install IPY kernel, as well as uh, we need to do Tonda install Jupyter. So by executing these two commands, you uh, ensure that the environment that you have is loaded with all the packages that is required. So if you see here by executing these two commands, it in installs like all the packages that is required for us to get started Jupyter Notebook and start uh, start the scripting. Uh, so you, you see here like Jupyter console Notebook 6.1.1 is all installed. So now after this, so then what we do is we start Jupyter Notebook and we can get started. So this will now open up uh, Jupyter Notebook uh, from the root directory. So from here, we go here and we can open the scripts that is already available. Or if we want to create a new script, so then from here, the root folder, we need to click this button, uh, the new drop down, and Python 3. So here, a new Python Jupyter Notebook script is opened. So we can give in a name here. So day one, version two. And rename, 
that's it so a quick recap uh, regarding the topics that we have covered so far so we have uh, gone through the the installation of anaconda and uh, how to start jupyter notebook as well as a spider ide and in spider we saw how to create a new project uh, so even though we are not going to use spider at least for the next few weeks uh, so it's good to uh, have a feel of the ide so we know how to start a jupyter notebook so there are two ways from the navigator which is uh, here so from this screen we can click on the launch button and open jupyter notebook uh, the other one is uh, from the command prompt from the anaconda command prompt uh, we have seen how to create a new environment how to open uh, uh, jupyter notebook from here so once you open the jupyter notebook it opens up in your browser uh, uh, from the default uh, directory so you can create a new uh, python jupyter notebook uh, file and uh, we also saw how to uh, how to uh, how to make a cell as a markdown and how to make them as a code and how to execute them using the play button mm -hmm. so that that's it um, so that's it for the day one uh, we will uh, we'll see you soon on uh, on the next uh, session uh, we will be going through creation of variables and uh, going through the data types in python if you like this video please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you know someone else who would be interested in learning data science or python please share this video with them thank you bye